All righty. That was fine. I mute my mic first. There we go. Hello. Welcome, everyone. First ever episode of the Press Play podcast. Uh, arguably the hottest debut episode in the most literal sense uh, because it is fucking hot. Um, with me today, as you can see on that side of the screen, that, what are my hands doing? There we go. On that side of the screen, join with me, Mr. Matthew Brettel. Uh, the, king, the Prince of Cardiff, he'll be king once Tom Jones dies. Uh, the, <laughs> the Prince of Cardiff in the music industry. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. Yeah, just uh, sweltering in the studio, bro. Yeah. But we'll we'll get there. It's all good. Perfect. Um, yeah, I can't believe it, to be honest. It's still six o'clock and it's bloody boiling. But... It, it's very, very hot. Um, let's just kick off because we haven't got much time because Zoom isn't very good. Um, let us know a bit about yourself. Uh, who are you? What what do you do? Um, all right. Well, yeah. I mean, um, my who am I? I'm I'm Matt Brettel. For those of you who don't know, I'm sure that's a fair few of you. Um, but I'm a I'm an audio engineer, um, producer, uh, songwriter, session player, uh, ex ACM graduate for all my sins, um, and yeah, and proud Welshman. I think that's probably about me. Yeah. I don't know if there's so. a, such a thing as a proud Welshman, but <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Um, fantastic. Well, thank you for being here, um, especially considering it was like, what, two weeks notice? That I, was it two weeks ago yeah, I asked? A week yeah. ago? Yeah, man. It's all, you know, it's all good. It's a pleasure to come on. Um, yeah, I've been really looking forward to it, to be fair. Fantastic. Okay, so let's start off. Number one question. What, why music? Of all the things that you could have done with your life, why, why have you chosen mm. music of all things? Well, um... I think, you know, obviously because I love doing music and um, I've been doing it since I was very young, to be fair, in, in various um, sort of, uh, how do I put it? Like, I don't know, in, in various different ways, really. Um, my mum, when I was like four, signed me up to go to, to Stagecoach. I'm sure some people can relate to that. Um, and uh, that kind of sparked it all off, really. So um so yeah i've been doing i've been doing singing and um i've been involved since since a very uh young age and then from there on up it's just been a, a natural progression into it it's kind of finding a path into the industry to to make my career and the, you know along the way i've always i thought i was going to do one thing and i'd end up doing another and then another opportunity would come along and I'd, I'd go down that kind of route and it's kind of uh led me to where i am today so Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of why I've just I haven't really known much else to be yeah. quite honest. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, what advice would you give to anybody that's trying to get into the industry? Because it's so hard. It's very competitive. It's quite yeah. shallow at times. Um, I mean, you're obviously quite lucky. You've been blessed with a face like that, a face of an angel. So <laughs> yeah, so you you can get you can get by. But what what advice would you give to someone who looks like a toe like me? Oh mate, don't don't be so daft. Um, <laughs> beautiful human. Um, no, I think that like uh, to be honest, I think the main thing really is um, self belief. That's a massive part of it. Uh, I know it's gonna sound that sounds really cl cliche because a lot of people say that, but it's it's really really true. Um, you know, you really have to believe in what you're doing and what, as I said, like, mainly have a have that end goal of like okay. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know what I'm going to do, but if I want to make music in my career, you've got to believe in yourself and what you're doing. Um, and also uh, really hard work, to be quite honest. Um, if you're not willing to put in the hard yards of uh, painstaking time to really get good at your craft, and I'm not saying that I'm the best at my craft of, of what I'm doing, but what I do know is that I do try and work as hard as anyone else. Um, in my spare time, uh, looking at tutorials, um, trying to observe what other people are doing, you know, different podcasts like this, um, and just really just trying to immerse myself in in it uh, rather than just making it my job, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like a lifestyle thing, um, which is to the detriment of some other things. You know, I don't see as many people as I'd like to uh, all the time, but for now that's fine you know i think if you as i said if you really want to do it then it's uh it's self-belief and hard work man and then i believe that if you do that and you're nice and um being a nice person goes a long way mm -hmm. in this industry um for sure 
if you're easy to get along with and you've got those other two things, then I, I really think that it, it'll stand you in good stead and you'll, you'll go far. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, earlier you touched on about being uh, an ACM alumni graduate like myself. Mm. This was where we first met, which we discussed yes. what, was seven years ago. Yes. Which is insane. Um, Absolutely. Seven years ago. What was your experiences like there? What do you, Would you recommend Music University for someone who's trying to make it in the industry? Would you say use it as a stepping stone? What What advantages or disadvantages does something like that actually have for someone? Um, well, you know, I think... I think for me, uh, growing up in Cardiff and and stuff, like we had a great, uh, we had a great support network. I had a great support network in school, um, and my music teachers were amazing. And I was lucky to have a really good uh, instrumental teacher um, for for drums, um, which is probably my main instrument that I play. Um, so I've always had like a really good uh education uh from that side of things and everyone's always been very encouraging um but what i will say is that you know living in wales um it has its disadvantages in just terms of you know it's not as popping as london um even though we went to acm in guildford obviously which is in surrey um but london's far more accessible from from where i was and i just thought look if i'm going to try and make this happen then you've really got to put yourself in the best situation possible to be able to to do that so uh so yeah so i mean the the location of the college was a massive part the fact that i was coming down to more of a, a music hub uh the fact that i was going to be working and, and meeting like in, like-minded in, individuals like yourself and, and others that i met along the way that i still call good friends now um which is great um so that was a big part of it as well um at the time the teaching faculty at, at acm was really good uh, for what because at the time I wanted to really be a, a session drummer uh, which has obviously worked out really well um, <laughs> so uh, at the time that was really you know they were everyone was really good and like I I've when I went there I was really confident that the the tutors could deliver on what I wanted to do um, and then yeah I mean like when I was there I think that again, I realized really quickly that if you wanted to get the most out of the college, then you really had to put a lot of time in yourself. It was like, you know, you can't be expected to like, if you, if you missed like your 9am lectures, like consistently, or you were like, just, you know, sort of like not turning up or, and then thinking that you're going to magic a, a good degree and, and get experiences out of it. Then I think you were living in a, in a slightly, you know, cloud cuckoo, shall I say? <laughs> um, but I, you know, I just, yeah, I think that, and because because I kind of did that, um, I met some really good people um, on the tutor side of things and um, built up good, strong relationships with uh, someone like Akira and Pepper, for example, um, who's been really instrumental in actually helping me out uh, with career opportunities um, since I've left ACM. So, yeah, I think, again, it's just that kind of, um, you know, that that work ethic thing and just really like you know when you're in uni it's like yeah if you if you put a lot into it then I, I did get a lot out of it but that's just my experience you know I know a lot of people have had different experiences where they when they went to the college so yeah um but yeah for sure that that was for me anyway do you, do you still have any contact with anyone who's at the uni like tutor wise that's still teaching do you have anything to do um I mean no I mean like uh not really to be honest um because kieran's left the college since and a lot of my favorite you know a lot of them left off yeah yeah we yeah. graduated seemed to leave didn't they yeah yeah and you know I, I i don't i don't really think it's my place to to go into that um, mm -hmm. too much but uh you know i'm not really like here to like be like oh you know i i loved acm man like i had a great yeah. time there um i mean know, they're not they're not paying us so why would we give them free, free it, promotion it, exactly <laughs> exactly so you know i'm not i'm not exactly gonna you know it's that that part of it i'm just yeah but es essentially no i don't have any contact with anyone um at the college uh but i do you know ollie susa who uh, works there who's lovely he's actually a family friend oh, okay. um so i you know i do uh speak to him at like a little bit but i haven't um in a, in a little while so mm -hmm. ollie if you're listening mate you're an absolute legend but um but yeah apart from that no is it is the answer mate oh, okay. unfortunately all right well, well we'll get past the past let's let's get to the now so what what are you what are you currently doing who are you working with what what have you worked on that sort of stuff what what's, okay. what's going on for matt right now so for me right now um 
my main job uh, is that I'm an engineer um, for Jake Gosling, mm-hmm. who um, has done pretty well for himself, I think, um, in the in the industry as a producer and a writer and um, a label head. Mm-hmm. Um, so I work for Jake on a day to day basis, um, and we you know we work on records together, uh, which I'm very privileged to be able to do. Um, and, you know, alongside that, I am working with, uh, up and coming artists myself, um, getting them down to sticky, uh, mm-hmm. which is the studio that I'm at. This is sticky studios, um, now. So we, I'm, yeah, I'm always on the lookout for new and emerging talent that, um, I can bring in and, and work with, um, to help with production on that front. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, like. I've been working for Jake for two years now. Um, and there's been, you know, we've had quite a bit of success in that time. So yeah, very, very, very lucky to to be doing what I'm doing for yeah. sure. So you work, cause I remember seeing, at least on your Instagram, you worked with KSI on his holiday. Was it, was it called yes. holiday, the track? Yeah. Yes. What was that like meeting someone like KSI, who's probably the biggest UK celebrity amongst people from ages like 18 to 24. What's yeah. it like working with people like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, KSI or uh, JJ, JJ. Yeah. as as I'm sure he'd like, you know, when when, when I'm speaking to about speaking about, he'd probably want to be called called that. You know, he's he's lovely. Um, to be honest, my time with him was very limited. Actually, the the story of the day was um, that he came up at around six o'clock uh, to the studio, which is quite a late start. Um, but you know, sometimes when you're working with the with bigger people that you know life kind of gets in the way and Mm -hmm. um so you know we were just kind of messing around with a few ideas had some guitar loops and stuff uh already up on the computer jake plays in um melodies and then i'll go and lay them down on the guitar um to have sometimes if we're working with certain artists we like to have some things prepared especially if time is uh isn't of a premium um it's quite nice sometimes to just have like some ballpark um sort of uh you know uh, ideas are down mm-hmm. already um so then yeah so he came uh along and um digital farm animals here as well nick uh he came who who co-wrote uh holiday with jake and jj um and yeah man like he, t- he turned up and basically you know we just we picked he picked out one of the ideas that were already there we started working on the track got it into a into a good place and then he had to leave then at around 10, I think it was, mm-hmm. because he had to get back to London because he was doing um, Good Morning Britain the next morning at Stupid O'Clock, oh, announcing okay. his uh, his Wembley show. Right. So the, the, the song was there in a skeleton form. Um, and then, yeah, basically they uh, they took the song. JJ has someone that he, works, he likes working with, a vocal producer called Cam, who's amazing. Um, and we've worked since worked with him on, uh, on Dylan's record. Um, but yeah, so they went down there, they finished the lyrics as he was tracking the vocals. Um, and then they swung everything back to me. Uh, I did all of my stuff, making it sound good to go off to the mix engineer. And that was, that was pretty much the song. So what's really interesting about holiday is that, um, the album was already done all over the place, which was actually a year ago, uh, you know, a year old, I think it was, uh, two days ago. Mm -hmm. So it's been out for a year now, the album. Um, But the album was already done. It was printed. The CDs were done. The vinyl was done. It was all ready to go. And um, Mams, who's KSI's manager, turned around and said, oh, we actually want this as the next single. And we were just, you know, I was scratching my head thinking, but everything's already been done. (laughs) So, you know, it was a bit, it was a bit strange. And um, Jake obviously has been in the industry for a very long time. And that was the first time that something like that had had happened to, Mm -hmm. to him as well. So, um, you know, it was, but it was great, man. Like the whole buzz around that, seeing people reacting how they did so positively to the song, because it was the first song that JJ did without any features. Um, yeah. and you know, really lucky to say that it's been his most successful song since yeah, it blew, it uh, well, of blew all up. time. Yeah. Yeah. It blew, so, it blew up real big. So yeah. Good. So it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been, it's been really cool. And I, I got to see it at Wembley as well. And that was, that was a special moment. It's kind of like a full circle thing. So yeah, that was, it was great, man. 
Oh, great. fantastic. And you mentioned uh, Dylan there, uh, someone that you've just worked with who yeah. sh- just supported, it was Ed Sheeran? Yes. Yeah, uh, at yes. Wembley again? Yes. Yeah. That so... Was at, so that was at Wembley Stadium, yeah, and um, uh, JJ was doing, headlined uh, Wembley Arena. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, no, she's she's brilliant as well. Um, and but yeah, like definitely one to watch for sure. Okay, well, keep well, make sure you keep your ears out, people who are listening. Um, she's obviously making way. Basically, anyone who worked with Matt seems to just sort of skyrocket. So just <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, you know, I think I think uh, I think Jake can take more credit. Uh, yeah, but yeah, no, for sure. So rewinding back just a little bit, you mm-hmm. you've. Uh, you work as an engineer in the studio. You do play yeah. drums as well as other instruments. Yeah. You sing all that sort of stuff. You've been on tour uh, with yes. a pretty big name. Do you want to name drop it or shall I? If you can remember. Oh, I mean, like, you know, you, yeah, I'm, I, I, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. Well, you've been on tour with Sting. You supported you supported Sting with uh, with another artist, didn't you? Was it Sting? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we did support. Yeah, I was working with the, with the really talented um, Chinchilla, mm-hmm. who is also another ex-ACM uh alumni mm-hmm. um and going back to his name again but kieran sort of sorted that one out for me as well um off the back of that so so yeah like you know that was uh that was in 2019 so that was yeah. about three years ago so that was just before Four. the thing the thing happened yeah the thing um so yeah no uh yeah i had a great time there man and that's a completely different side to the industry uh like you know being a session player mm-hmm. um slash uh, musical director completely different to what i do now it's like a di- like a whole different world but another world that is you know really cool and it has its benefits as well but yeah we had a great time man i think we did like i think we did four shows with sting um out in europe mm-hmm. uh and got to see some places that i'd never thought i'd see and um you know, we were in places like Estonia, Lithuania, um, Latvia, I think, and then it was Bulgaria as well. So mm-hmm. um, four countries I'd never been to before. And yeah, we got the the privilege of doing it with a great man. So yeah, man, it was it was really cool. Really, did, really cool. Did you actually get to speak to, to Sting at all? Or was it? Um, I know some artists of, can be different. Yeah, I mean, you know, Sting, um, it, he wasn't really there like too much because uh, obviously he's like super mega famous and everything. Mm-hmm. Um so like, I think he spent a bit of time like uh, when we were sound checking at his hotel or whatever he was doing. And um, I saw him in the corridor a few times. But, you know, when you're just a when you're a session player, I think like it's very important to understand your role mm-hmm. and, and what um, who, what you are and what you what you're there to do. Like my main focus really was to play for Chinchilla um, and to make sure that her show is going well um and i'm sure that as lovely as sting was i don't think it was my place to like potentially like go up to sting and be like oh hey man just wanted to say that like i really love you like you know know, i love your stuff yeah um it's not like you know you're kind of there as to 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 do a job um but yeah if sting had have said anything to me then obviously i'd have had a conversation with him but um if uh, you know from what i saw he seemed lovely and he you know we did welcome us into uh, soundcheck one time and, and was really welcoming and stuff so I don't have a I don't have a bad word to say about him. I just never really got the chance to 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 have a chat. But yeah. as I said, it was um it was kind of out of my uh, remit really. Yeah, I mean, but it's still it's it's insane. It's something you can put on the CV. I've worked with Sting, even if you embellish it. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, lo- very very loosely, very loosely. <laughs> yeah, no, um, but no, I you know definitely got to work with uh, with Chinchilla, which yeah. was which was great for sure. Oh, fantastic! You've got your own projects going as well. Um, you've got uh, you've got your EDM project. Uh, is it EDM? Yeah, you're like your electronic sort of project going on. Yeah. You've got your live stuff that's going on. Do you want to talk about some of that sort of stuff? Well, let's start, yeah, with, let's I mean, start with the new stuff. What, what, what have you got going with this electronic project that you've got going? Yeah, so I've, uh, this is very recent, to be fair. I mean, um, I've, I've got an electronic alias called Metal. Um, and the idea is like a lot of <laughs> a lot of my friends back in school, um, they used to call me like Metal Brettle and like um, and all of this stuff. So I was like, I'm just I, I kind of have a, uh, a tendency to do this where if someone makes fun at me at something, I kind of just like turn it back on its head and just use it to my advantage mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, so yeah, so that kind of was born out of of that. And um, so yeah, I, I took it and just flipped the A to a V because that seems to be what cool people are doing these days. So <laughs> I, I was just like, I'll, I'll, I was like, I'll just try and do that. Um, and so yeah, so 
it's you know I, I did a remix for uh someone that we work with here at the studio who signed to jake's label um is a guy called fergus and he's very 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 talented uh one of my favorite people to work with um and i had the pleasure of producing um a track called fight forever off his debut album love upside down which again i would you know if anyone's looking for some new mu new music to to check out i would definitely recommend checking out that album because uh it's it's very underrated and um but yeah anyway that's my sales pitch over um <laughs> but basically i produced that record and then fergus was looking for someone to do a remix uh and he was initially he was like oh, i want to like a, a house remix for this song mm -hmm. and i was like to be honest mate like i really think that it would lend itself to drum and bass um and i was now i've never done a drum and bass thing before uh at all but i was like you know what i'm just gonna try uh and make this drum and bass remix for the song that i'd already produced so i was already very familiar with the structure mm -hmm. and how everything was and how everything was set out and the parts and what i wanted to use so yeah so i went about that and i think it turned out okay um and that got released about a month ago and it's it's had some regional radio play and um nice. bbc introducing in cambridge are getting behind it which i'm really excited about and that's kind of inspired me now to think okay well yeah why not why not do some more like electronic stuff mm -hmm. um and just have a bit of fun man because like you know a lot of the time at the moment which you know which is great but i'm working on other a lot of other people's music um which i love i love collaboration um but also i'm kind of like i want to keep my mind uh kind of have as many ideas as i can and make mm -hmm. make my time um as beneficial to me as i can so if that's a, if there's an outlet that i can do something through metal and and make something that's that's cool and it it doesn't it's not just going to be drum and bass it's going to be a range of different electronic mm -hmm. uh styles you know i've been really i've been listening to um a lot of flume recently uh, a lot of the chain smokers the mm -hmm. new record from them uh, is amazing who they co-produce with one of my favorite producers ian Kirkpatrick. Mm -hmm. um so i'm listening to a lot of that um and also a lot of fred again as well who is you know unbelievable and I just think, yeah, why not like give that a go um, and just see see what happens, man. Like, you know, I'll, I'll be putting a lot of time into it. Um, but as I said, you know, I'll, I'll put it into the ether and if it works, great. But if it doesn't, it's just all part of the learning experience and uh, and just time that I've spent getting really into um, synths and uh, really understanding how all of that works. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just getting really nerdy about it, really. So. <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of like what it what it is, and I'll be doing more remixes um, in the future for sure. And also, the plan is to do some songs, uh, get some featured artists mm -hmm. uh, on there as well. So, so yeah, so I'm just in the process of building a like kind of like a just just as many ideas as I can really, and putting them out there on TikTok as as everyone seems to do these days. Mm -hmm um it seems to be the only way that you can and you know thank god there is a way that you can promote your music and it's it, it does really well so i'm starting on that and uh we'll see where it goes mate. yeah we'll see so where it goes that's it's a good thing that you you mentioned that it's like an outlet for you because i remember back at least when we were back in uni the sort of production and engineering side was what you were doing when you was doing the live stuff as sort of like your main main sort of yeah. outreach and then this the production and engineering would be your sort of like hobby projects and all that sort of stuff now that yeah. you're doing the hobby projects as as your uh, uh sorry now that you're doing the production and the engineering as sort of your main shtick you've gone back to the creative side to be your outlet so it's quite cool that you have to have like we need to have that sort of once it becomes work you need something else to yeah to replace that yeah man and like to be honest i i've had a really tough time um over the last couple of years with that sort of creative uh spark i don't know whether that's to do with like covid and uh things happening in life and and all of that kind of stuff but you know i kind of i was doing this job and i love it like it's great but it does take a bit out of you once mm -hmm. you're in the studio for seven days uh, so you know five days a week seven hours a day um and you have to you have to deliver mate you know you have to be on your game every day um working with artists you've never met before 
to make their to make their stuff sound as best as you can by the end of the day and that mm-hmm. that's my job so a lot of the time i'd finish work and i'd be like oh man i just want to go home and kick back have a beer play some call of duty mm-hmm. um and i went down i went down that kind of uh rabbit hole for a little bit um uh, which is which is fine you know um and I, I think it's important to do that but i was struggling with the fact that my hobbies had become my job mm-hmm. and that sounds a bit strange yeah um but because I, I used to do music teaching before I, I did this job and obviously I was a session player as well mm-hmm. um, to do this. So, you know, in, in some ways, my dreams have, have become uh, realized in certain, in certain aspects, but yeah, it was, it was really tough to then think, okay, getting the mindset of, I've just done eight hours here. So how for the next two or three in my downtime, like what am I going to do? And just flipping it to be like, oh, well, you can still have fun set yourself some goals and just like the good thing about the whole metal thing is is that it is completely different to anything that we do at the studio you know mm-hmm. it's it's like i don't on purpose i don't want it to be like poppy yep um you know stuff that yeah we we do do a lot i don't think that our, the music that we make here um is straight up the middle pop by any by any means um but you know i just want that release where it's like it's just something different yeah well, it's the whole goal is for, for, for your job is to, I am, I guess the ultimate goal is to be in the charts. So whatever chart music is, is what you're working on and you're working on that day in, yeah. day out. So yeah, I it, thought, well, you know, I think, I think the goal for, for us obviously is to be in like being in the charts and having that success is amazing. But I think it's just making the music that we're the most, that we're most proud of, man. And like, yeah. you know, especially like listening back to that Dylan record that's come out last week um i did a little reel and i was just like yeah this is the most proud i've been of a record um just because i know that i've come so so much further in a year mm-hmm. um with what i know and 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 what i contributed to the to the record um so you know that's that's all you want and then you know it translates then to to their listeners if mm-hmm. you're happy with it if you're proud of it then people are gonna i find love it whereas um i haven't really had too much that's come out that i haven't been a fan of but usually like from what i've heard like if you're kind of second guessing something or whatever then it doesn't necessarily always do uh, as well so yeah so yeah i think the main thing is to just you know make the music that you're proud of first and foremost and then if it translates to to the charts then great yeah for sure yeah. well when we were i'm gonna say when we we're back at uni because that's the last time we had sort of any major interaction with each other we've never not we, we we didn't speak for a few years but not because anything happened just like you know shit happened, yeah exactly yeah on. that's it so in, in uni, we was very much. It was very much Bringing Horizon, nineteen seventy-five. I remember mm-hmm. singing in a kitchen with you, Lay Miz, at one point. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you for nothing that none of that has changed. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So you're still you're still into your sort of metal and your in your rock and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah? And um, you know, again, it's something that I really want to get into as well. Um, I'm working with a, a really cool girl called Nee Jenkins at the moment, and uh, she's like kind of an up and coming um, guitar music driven, mm-hmm. uh, you know, artist, and that really excites me. Like I love, I love it. I love, you know, Bring Me the Horizon, like one of my favorite bands. Like it's, uh, it's they're, they're, you know, they're really, really cool, and it's really cool that they're crossing over into the charts. And the same with the likes of Ar- Architects and all of those kind of guys. You know, I love. I love that. I, I've always loved that music. I will always listen to that. And that's the music that I listen to um, in my spare time still. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm driving home in the car, it'll be a Bring Me The Horizon album or, um, you know, or something like that. Or, you know, the 1975 or what, yeah. whatever it might be. Um, but yes, mate, still very much into all of that. Absolutely. Nice. Nice. Okay. We're in. Uh, I'm just going to give you some quick fire questions. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to give you a this or that. You're going to give me your gut instinct. Are you ready? All right. Okay. Cool, yeah, I'm good. Strat or telly? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to say now Strat, but I was a telly man, but okay. I've been converted. Yeah. For, th- for those of you who don't know, Stratocaster, Telecaster, they're both types of guitars. Uh, Glastonbury or Coachella? Oh, definitely. Well, I've never been to either of them, but from what I've seen, Glasto, 100%. Okay. Uh, you were Spotify or an Apple Music person? I am Spotify. Fantastic. Uh, Doja Cat or Nicki Minaj? <laughs> wow that's a that's a that's a great question that's that is a that's killer um i'm gonna say oh man i don't know too much doja cat 
and I think like when I was growing up, like Starship was an absolute banger. So <laughs> we're just gonna say like Nicki Minaj. I'm just gonna okay. say. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Beatles or the Stones? Oh mate. Rolling I'm say Stones. Say neither, or but no, I, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to probably go with. Oh, the Beatles. The Beatles. Okay. Uh, yeah. Gig in a. This is watching. Uh, gig in a theatre okay. or a stadium. Would you rather be in like a small theatre or or a stadium? Um. Stadium. Stadium. Okay. Yeah. Uh, My Chemical Romance or Panic at the Disco? Oh, My Chemical Romance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the most important question. Are you a Harry, Zane, Louis, Nile, or Liam fan? Oh, definitely a Harry fan. Harry fan. Okay. One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna definitely. keep. I'm actually gonna keep a note of that for any future guests, so we can see which of the direction is 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 the most popular out of all. Of them. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Uh, so we've got ten minutes left on the meeting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly end it and then jump back in. If that's cool with you. Okay. Yeah. 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 No worries, Sweet. man. Be back in two Let's seconds, guys. Fantastic. Oh, He's back. back. There we go. Fantastic. Another 40 minutes of... Another 40 uh, minutes of sweaty balls and shirts. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> well, you said it. I was thinking it, man. Uh, okay, so we did the quick fire questions. Really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I disagree with you, Nicki Minaj over Doja Cat, but that's neither here. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I just don't have enough of an, an informed... Like, I need to listen to more of Doja Cat's music to have an informed opinion. Um, and unfortunately... Uh, I don't really like the Beatles or the Rolling Stones, so people can judge me for that as well. So who would you pick from that era? Who was your who was your band then? What, from like the sixties? Yeah. Like well, the Who, the... I'd probably say. Okay, yeah, no, that's not a bad shout, the Who. Yeah. Um definitely. And then like Pink Floyd were like back end, right? Or mm -hmm. maybe they were like more early seventies, but yeah, I think more in that kind of direction, but definitely like definitely the the Who um okay. and i like i i i might be they were around in the 60s right uh this i wasn't around in the 60s so i'm hey, not 100 percent sure listen listen if someone's gonna pull me up on that then i am very sorry <laughs> that's fine uh, anyone comments yeah. here, i'll just delete the comments from all the posts from the, the but YouTube isn't it that. isn't it interesting though if you look back at the era of the 1960s compared to now think about how much music is out there now compared to how much music was out mm -hmm. there back then it's mm -hmm. like almost it was almost a linear choice as, as yeah. you put in your question it was like do you like the Beatles or do you like the Rolling Stones? Yeah. And if you if you said neither, then you know, oh, you're gonna listen to some Motown. That like <laughs> yeah. that was about it, really, right? Yeah. yeah. So you know, it was it, it's just it's amazing how everything's evolved, really. I think it was um I think it was I was watching uh the the download festival highlights uh the other day and Gene mm. Gene Simmons was on there because Kiss were there. Um, yeah. You can see got a t-shirt up there. Kiss were there. Oh yeah, yeah. They were very good. Um, but he said that rock and roll is dead. And the reason he says this is because think about uh, the 30 year period from the 50s to, to the 70s. You had the Beatles, yeah. you had the Stones, you had all of these amazing bands. Mm -hmm. where, where, where are the Beatles now? Who's the day's modern Beatles? Who's today's well, modern know, Rolling Stones? Like, huh. Yeah, I mean, I have I have this conversation with um, with people here quite a lot. Actually, when people come in, I'm like, where's the where's the generational artist of, of, of this time? Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, like, for example, if Arctic Monkeys existed in the 60s, they'd have been absolutely bloody massive, like mm -hmm. off the stratosphere. It's just because record labels had all the power to be able to just force feed you, like, in a way, like, oh, we've decided that the Beatles are going to be the superstars. So they are going to be. Obviously, they had the songs as well. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like, you know, someone like an Alex Turner could have existed in that era and, and, and had the success that he does now and more. Um, and it's just like, okay. And then you think about how many bands are in the ilk of Arctic Monkeys, like your headliners, like the Killers, the Strokes, all of those kind of bands, your Kings of Leons. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you take the pool between all of those bands and you put them together and you've got two and then you split them into two, that would be the amount of fans that the Beatles and the yeah. Stones had. Mm -hmm. So it's just the fact that music has become easier to consume and for the listener, you know, to to be able to just pick up like, a random playlist on spotify or whatever and dive in and then all of a sudden you've got a new favorite band um that just didn't exist back then so unfortunately gene i'd probably say i have to disagree um do i don't you, think rock and do you think there. the fact that uh the fact that music is so easily consumable now is a detriment mm. to new artists um I in think, ways in i some think ways. there's yeah i think there's 
I think there's an argument for both. I think there's an argument for the fact that, you know, all of a sudden you post up a song on TikTok and it's sick and then it goes viral um, mm -hmm. out of nowhere. And then that is the best way um, for record labels to see new talent. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're in front of them. Because, you know, I remember when I was like 16, 17 and I was in bands and stuff back in Wales. And, you know, I thought the music was all right. But it's like we had no way apart from like BBC introducing. Um, and then if your radio, if your introducing radio person doesn't like you, then you're kind of just like, oh, well, I'm just gonna have to play like hundreds and hundreds of gigs until someone sees me. And if they do, I better hope my voice was good on the night. Yeah. You know, I better hope that I wasn't hanging from the next, from the day before or whatever. Um, and it's like now it's like, well, okay, you can manufacture your, um, you know, you can look as good as you want to on TikTok. You know, I could, I could put out a video on TikTok tomorrow, like auto tune my voice to hell or whatever. But like, that's how I want to be perceived mm -hmm. on TikTok. Whereas, you know, if you go into a gig environment, you might, you, you, your strings might break on your guitar and you couldn't afford another one. Yeah. So you're kind of buggered. And it's like, you, you can be seen in the light now that, that you want to be seen at all times. But like going back to your original question, I honestly think that it's, it's better now than it was say 10 years ago yeah even though that there is more music i still think that if your music is great it's gonna like the right people are gonna see it because there's a platform for it now mm -hmm. um which i think is really cool uh that, that was a great answer that was a really good answer yeah uh you can, in... you can clip that one i'll clip, clip it one. i'll clip that that's 100 that's going on tiktok i'm gonna auto tune your voice i'm gonna make them perceive you how i want them to perceive you <laughs> Like Elmo on helium. That's what you're going to sound like. Oh, mate, please. <laughs> okay. Please, I'd love that. So I've got another little sort of game to play. Okay. Build a band. Okay. Okay. You've got to pick a singer, a bassist, if you know any, a guitarist, a drummer, <laughs> and, a, and a producer for the band or, or manager, Oof. producer slash manager. So let's start off. Uh, let's start off from the drums. Any drummer, live, dead, anyone. Wow. Who's your drummer for but your like, mega star is band? This, is this like, in terms of like, what genre though or is this just like all time that's completely up to you you can build the best rock band in the world or you could build the best pop band with all metal guitarists it's completely you know that's, complete, <laughs> that's completely up to you if you, wow. if you could pick any drummer live or dead to be in a band who would it be yeah okay that you're managing let's pretend you're managing them okay fine um okay so i think that on drums it would probably be um it probably be, have to be neil per from neil rush mm -hmm. uh because he was such a he could play anything neil you know and i think he could make it sound like obviously what he did in rush was super technical but i think that he could you know he can just play anything and he, he was such a student of buddy rich and and all of that but you know as going back to what we said before i love heavy music so this is gonna be probably like more towards like that kind of thing mm -hmm. um honorable mention to like taylor hawkins as well obviously mm -hmm. but uh i'd probably say neil pert yeah on the drums neil pert, okay. um and then on the bass he's trying to think of a bass player now no 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 i the only one he knows is paul mccartney it's the only one anyone knows nah 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 <laughs> nah, 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 nah i'm gonna say deacon from queen nice yep because if you, if you can find him, no one knows where he if is. If you can find him, yeah, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's not up to play live anymore. <laughs> but the reason why I say that is that he is responsible for some of the most iconic bass lines in music, mm -hmm. and also as a songwriter, you know, he's probably one of the the best um, bass writing sort of right, you know, bass playing writers that have, that have existed. Mm -hmm. I mean, Johnny McDade's doing it right now. From uh, I know he's uh, he's keys right, so. Um, but no, I think, I think that, uh, I think, yeah, Deacon from Queen, um, okay. holding it down. And then if on the complete other end of the spectrum, actually, who I'm going to see in a week's time, Henrik Linder from Dirty Loops, um, okay. would also have an honorable mention just because he is absolutely out of this world ridiculous. Okay. So, so yeah, he's your, uh, he's your sub for when you can't find Deacon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> to do, to do exactly the opposite of what Deacon would do. Yeah yeah 
So uh, yeah, that would be it. Who you got on guitar? You can have two. You can pick a lead and a rhythm, or if you just want to have a four piece, that's completely okay. Different. Okay. I think, I think that. Oh man, this is really hard because I like I don't know what I don't know what music, but I think because this person's music has been used in so many different ways, I'd probably say Nile Rogers on guitar. Yeah, yeah, that's first a solid like chart. one like on rhythm guitar, mm-hmm. we'll have Nile Rogers. Um for songwriting ability again and also just like as i said his music's been sampled so much and he's gone across different genres and 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 all of that kind of thing so i'll probably say nile rogers um there and then if i was gonna have a lead guitarist i'd have to go for another member of queen it'd have to be brian may Mm -hmm. um just because yeah like I, i he's one of the best guitarists i've ever seen live um and also the songs they speak for themselves really um so yeah so brian may would definitely be in there with niall Mm. brian and niall on on the guitars who you got singing (laughs) well uh i like i I basically should have just answered queen and my favorite (laughs) band but like i I just except, except for their drummer apparently he's the only one you haven't mentioned yeah, I mean <laughs> Roger Taylor is obviously amazing, but I'd have Neil Peart over Roger. Yeah. Um I definitely wouldn't have Geddy Lee on vocals. <laughs> Might have had Geddy Lee on bass actually, because he's a phenomenal bass he player. He's a great bass But player. I wouldn't have had Get- Geddy Lee on vocals. I'm just trying to th- wrap my brains to see if there if there's anyone else that would stand out to me on lead vocal. I mean Chad Kruger is still available. <laughs> <laughs> um no, no, it was yeah. It's even gonna, just, it's even gonna... if it's just for songwriting ability, Chad Chad Kroger is. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, for sure. Actually, no, I tell you what. Even though Freddie's amazing, I'd say let's get let's get Miles Kennedy in there. Miles Kennedy. What, why the hell not? Because sure. he is he is also amazing, and I don't want to like just turn in, in to be some like Queen thing. But obviously, honorable mention to the best person to ever do it, mm-hmm. Freddie. But I love Miles Kennedy's voice. So I, let's go with Miles Kennedy. Miles Why Kennedy. not? Hi, Bria. I'm on a podcast. Hello. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll speak to you in a bit. Uh, yeah, I will be. I'm just live right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, that was uh, that was Jake's mum. That's all right. But, like, no I'm problem. Actually, I'm actually helping her out with a podcast myself. Oh, lovely. So, yeah. Um, right. But, yeah, so I'll probably say Mar- yeah, Miles, um, Miles, Miles, Miles Kennedy. Kennedy on the vocals. Okay. Yeah. And then you've got a producer, which I think I know the answer. I think you mentioned it earlier. Who your producer would be? But producer, yeah. Um, I'd probably say yeah. I'd probably just just for the hell of it, just to see what would happen. Just I'd say Ian Kirkpatrick um, of Dua Lipa, the Chainsmokers, mm-hmm. etc. Um, because I think the guy's an absolute genius, uh, and I can't really say Jake, even though obviously Jake, <laughs> you, you know, he's he's pretty good. Um, right. But yeah. Uh, I I'd probably say I'd probably say Patrick on yeah just to see what see what the hell would happen with that combo. Mm-hmm. So yeah, why not? Well, it sounds interesting at the very least. It, but it's... I think you know that kind of sums up my uh, my music yeah. uh, kind of taste a little bit. I mean, I could have said Sam Carter for vocals as well from Architects, um, but that would have been really weird. <laughs> uh, but he's also a phenomenal vocalist, but more from like the screaming point of view and stuff. But yeah, yeah man, like I, I think that'd be an interesting band. Why not? Cool. Uh, is there anyone that you're looking forward to or anyone that you're listening to currently? Not necessarily someone that you work with or someone new, but mm-hmm. is that who's who are you listening to right now? Oh, that's a very good question. And it's going to sound really weird, but I don't actually listen to loads. Right. Like I'm not I, I, <laughs> I've been listening to more podcasts and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, genuinely, like when I find an album, it usually goes on heavy rotation for like about a month. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the, you know, as I said before, the new flume record, um, I'm actually really liking the Drake record, um, okay. at the moment. Uh, I'm really liking that. Um, I, I need like, I need some new like rock music in my life. Oh. Um, I tend to keep going back to the same bands that mm-hmm. I've always been listening to, but I kind of been listening to a bit of Spirit Box a Spirit little Box. bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're really cool, and the whole female fronted like uh, screaming thing is mm-hmm. like super dope. So, yeah, I've been listening to some Spirit Box. 
Um, and then to be honest, man, like I do end up listening like a lot. Uh, Jake's manager, John, is really good, and he gets people into the studio that are kind of like up and coming. Mm-hmm. And then it tends to be that I end up listening to their music off the back of sessions that we've done. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a girl coming in tomorrow called Baron Olivia, who's like kind of been on Radio One and stuff. Um, she put out a song called Tomorrow about a month ago and that's been on heavy rotation as well so nice. yeah man but like yeah like genuinely it's it, it sounds bad but uh i don't i need to like get into more like listening to playlists getting my ear to the ground mm-hmm. but i'm actually just really lucky that we get to work with some really yeah. talented people so that new, new music side of things it's kind of kind of taken care of by work really so yeah nice uh are you going to any festivals this year or yes have you been to any? i um I haven't been to any yet, but I'm going to Reading and Leeds this year. Nice. Um, to see Bring Me the Horizon, Rage Against the Machine. Tom Morello okay. would have been a good shout for guitar, actually. He would have been, yeah. Um, but yeah, Rage, bit of Rage, bit of uh, Arctic Monkeys. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to just, I think there's like Ant Shikaria playing and, as well, who yeah. I love. Um, and then a lot of people that we've worked with over the last year and, and the year before as well. So it'd be cool to catch up and hang out with some, with some people as well. Nice. Um, so yeah. Is that the only one you got going for Le- Le- running leads? Yeah, man. Like, I mean, to be honest, um, you know, we, we, we haven't had the chance really to, to go to like, we didn't, I didn't end up going to Glastonbury, um, this year. I, I haven't been yet, but I really want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, no, that, that's it. I, I've been going to a lot of gigs, yeah. Um, but not so like in terms of a festival. Yeah, it'd just be Redden and Leeds this year. Who have you been um, watching? Who have you been watching at gigs? Or who have I been watching at gigs? Um, well, I went to the Ed Sheeran show obviously yep. to see Dylan. Um, you know, recently, which which was actually really really good. Um, I saw Ed in Budapest to get uh in 2019 and. The, the crowd like it was so big there i think like that festival was like a hundred thousand people um and like it was just in a field and like ed was just like on the stage like a million miles away i just couldn't yeah. hear him so i had a bit of a negative experience like of seeing ed live mm-hmm. but this show that he, he did was amazing and the fact that he had a band um and all of that it was really cool um so yeah so like that was that was cool um and he absolutely smashed it to be fair dylan smashed it as well um which was great we went to see a uh a canadian artist called charlotte cardano we worked with at the studio as well a couple mm-hmm. of months back um and she was really really cool she did a show at uh, lafayette in london but mm-hmm. that's an 800 capacity venue but when she goes to canada she like i saw a clip of her the other day and it was like you know the equivalent of playing a headline star at reading um, oh, right. she's like that kind of big so to see yeah. someone like that on a small stage that was that was really really cool uh i've seen architects recently we were amazing um i'm just trying to think who else really uh nothing else really kind of nothing popping jumps mind. out to you got, this got anything the head. got anything lined up that you're going to see anyone you're excited to see other than reading and leeds obviously um yeah we're going to see alec benjamin in a couple of weeks time Mm-hmm. Um, which would be really cool. He's again, he's massive in the states, uh, but he's doing two dates at the I think it's Shepherd's Bush here. Um, so we worked with him in LA when we were out there in in February, um, and he also came to the studio here recently. So I'm really excited to, to see Alec uh, do his thing. And then the day after that, uh, heading back to Casino Guildford. <laughs> I don't know if we've sent shudders down the spine of w- some of the listeners. I, they probably haven't cleaned it since we last went. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, God, but uh, the we're basically there's a um, there's a festival there. I think it's called Radar Festival, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm going uh, with one of my pals, Cam, um, on the Sunday, mm-hmm. and we're gonna see Dirty Loops, and it's their um, their debut performance in the UK. So, oh, nice. I, what uh, God knows what they're gonna think when they're gonna turn up to Casino. That's like a... three of the three of the most amazing musicians in the world. Uh, are going to turn up for their debut UK performance at Casino Guildford, and that that really worries me. <laughs> Dude, um, that, that's a very odd one, isn't it? That's yeah, odd, it is. But you place. know, from from lectures there, the stage and the PA system is actually pretty good. It's pretty so, decent. Yeah, you know, like I think it's like a it must be like an eight hundred cap up up top. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so like it'll be a great gig, man. And then Polini's playing before, 
who is really cool as well, really great guitar player, and also Hacktivist, who mm-hmm. um, I love from back in the day as well. So mm-hmm. I'll be, you won't, I don't know if you'll see me in a mosh pit, but <laughs> maybe. I'll, I'll make, look a, out make for an it. exception. Yeah, oh. make an exception for H. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to ask you. I think we can maybe start wrapping up. Thank you cool, to man. everyone who who's watched um, and those of you that are listening on Spotify and watching the recap on YouTube. Remember, check out the links that are all on the screen for you. Matt, where can people find you? Shout out your, your stuff. Yeah, I mean, like the easiest thing is probably just go to my Instagram, um, at Matt Brettel, very simple. And then from there, you'll probably just see uh like links to other socials like for metal like my mm-hmm. um electronic project um and you know uh on tiktok it my handle's the same as it is on instagram uh, and my twitter is matt brow i've been very blessed that i don't actually have that common of a surname so my <laughs> handles are pretty in check to be fair so i mean cool. i i have that blessing as well so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> But uh, thank you very much, Matt, for your time. Sorry that you've now Pleasure, you now weigh four stone less because you've had to stand in a hot room. Hey, so. listen, I ain't complaining, man. I ain't <laughs> complaining about that. Trust me. <laughs> so, but thank you everyone for watching. Like I say, check out the links, check out Matt's stuff, uh, follow the Twitch, all that sort of stuff. I do play video games on here as well, so it's not all just talking about music if that's not what you're interested in. But you should be. Hell yeah, music's, music's amazing, so you should all be interested. But uh, also, gaming's great too. It is too. Fantastic. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Have a lovely rest of your day. See you later, Matt. Have a great one. Nice and bro. Peace.